Today on BTF Week 4 of the Street Fighter League Pro US Season 2. Brooms and sweeps. Are we still cursed? And let me show you what an OCV actually is. Says JB. Welcome back to Beyond the Fist, the Street Fighter League live cast talk show presented by Toga TV. Tagashi Azrael, Mortsi, and Splice Helix here to talk all things Street Fighter League Pro US. Video footage from Street Fighter League Pro US is used with permission from Capcom. Follow the Capcom Pro Tour and Street Fighter League on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters. On YouTube at youtube.com slash Capcom Fighters TV. And on Facebook Live, facebook.com slash Capcom Fighters. How are we doing today, guys? What's up? Fantastic. All right, let's get started. Yeah. Week four, match one uh, began with a battle at the middle of the pack. It was CJ Truth's Team Spirit taking on 801 Striders. Team Storm in a clash to start chasing the top of the table going into week four. Here's your highlight package from said week four, match one. It is Team Spirit versus Team Storm. Take a look. But it was bop, bop, two medium punches into the, uh, the mirror. Putting match point for Tommy Two Step. Ooh. Filing knee drop. Man, the way he uses tackle. It's I am like such he, a fan. He instills fear into the opponent from moving away, right? And like he makes that could have been there. that could have been EX tackle. So he's taking a lot of liberties with these uh with these tackles. Oh, the crouching fears. Tries to move after that uh, quarter circle back medium punch. Still nothing. <clears throat> She just gets so many little ticks of damage because that V trigger. Man, it's very much a new, steps, very much a new mechanic. I like that. I right. like that. A little twist on the old. Wow. Oh. I like her having V triggers in general. It's cool to see a character come back to the series with in a new way. Yeah, right? with new iterations, right? With new tools. Oh, that's gonna hit. Me. He oh, he has the trade combo. Oh no. Yeah, done and it. done. CA is going to be the one that gets the W for Team Storm. I mean, we interviewed this guy. He doesn't want to think. He's just going to keep you in this blender. Oh, he, he just beat himself on the chest. Just sometimes you want to go in. Plus frames? I feel yes, like this sir. just powers up Gustavo. Like, 801 strikes. Like, yes. More. Just a little bit. He knows when it turns over. <gasps> I didn't think he was gonna get hit by that. That was godlike. What a conversion! That is slick. That's gonna be enough. Mojo getting the confirm. Is he dead? Oh Ooh. man, you knew it. Wow. Yeah, because if you don't, you just said yourself. If you don't, if you don't hit a button, you're stuck in that run and you can't do anything. So you can definitely be punished. Yeah, even being able to cancel the gun smoke with the back uh, option, if you just press back, she stops in place. Kind of like Kenwa, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's still highly punishable. Oh, counter hit right there. Ooh. Two hit fireball, B skill. Karen just got I that love, B reverse. I Look love how me. active it is. Oh, yeah, so he's he's been teasing with his fireball. CJ Truth has been pumping away, trying to get past it. Oh, standing roundhouse, a trade. That did more damage for Luce, to Lucia, excuse me. Oh boy, a big one. That was the was roundhouse, roundhouse plane. Yeah. Another Again. one. Another Again. one. But... Almost. Okay. Oh, the back dash. That was slick. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, uh -oh. not quite. Still a lot of life to work with. I think two more touches. That's one. Now you are in kill range with Karen. <gasps> Yo, Gunsmoke, you're dead! Oh my, he just did it. He actually just did it. No hugs needed. Uh. All right. <laughs> so that, 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 that was a good way to end our first highlight package with, with the, uh, I, I wish I got the uh, the clip of, did you guys see the interview when they were talking about handshakes and hugs and how terrible Team Storm is at it? Uh, yes, they're that, yeah, awful. They're it absolutely, so, yeah. It's like, it like it's heartwarming almost because yeah. they're so awkward. You can't help but look. It's not a car crash per se, but it's like you can't help but look and laugh because even though it's so terrible, 
just so wholesome at the same there's so much joy yeah their <laughs> handshakes have no confirms and their hugs <laughs> <laughs> all right enough about the handshakes let's get into the actual action itself the first game of course saw tommy two steps yuri in and take on idom's poison the second time we've seen poison from him so far in the sfl this match came down to the wire and it was a final hit confirmed from the austin texas native to dance his way to victory but idom's poison continues to look impressive as the lore is expected to be targeted for the ban for at least half the season what impressed you more the composure of tommy two-step or the continuing improvement rate from this secondary from idom miles ahead of last season's birdie mortzi so i like i think in this case right now obviously tommy's doing great netting far more wins than i think a lot of people anticipated like he's doing super well man he is his urines look really nice, but I gotta give it to Idom's poison because it's just such a massive, massive step up from the pretty last season, dude. It's just like it's a character, and you can see. I'm not sure whether it's a confidence thing with the buffer because he did get the double jab at the end there at the end of the clip where he missed the confirm and then subsequently died to the combo that Tommy ended up doing because I think he was concerned he was gonna hit into the mirror. When he did the jab jab, he thought he might get like hit back into it or something, I guess. Um, and he didn't end up following through. So it's that kind of confidence stuff. I don't, whether or not it's him missing the confirm or whether he was thinking he was going to hit the mirror, so he stopped. That's up for debate. But it's just looking so, so, so much better. And the fact that he's a person, like a full character now, or he has like, he's not just like a throwaway for half the season is going to be so important to Spirit doing well. Even though at this point, I'm genuinely thinking that Spirit might be more cursed than uh, Psycho, because Psycho is the team you're like, they're probably going to be the weakest team. But with Spirit, they're like the team that like, God, they're so sick, and then they suck for the whole season. So that's kind of where I'm at. I think, I, but the fact that Idom is doing is not just like a gimme for most of the time is really good. And I'm more inclined to give this one to IDOM just because Tommy is playing someone second. It's not because it's great that he's picking up the win and he almost did it like he's he came super close to taking it from Samurai as well. So it's just been like but it's the IDOM that's like you're beating a secondary. It's impressive but it's not like godlike, right? So, yeah, Idom's looking great. I'm really, it's really exciting. Plus, to see a character that is new, right? And that's really fun. All right. Is, is this sort of, uh, I'll, I'll turn the question over to Splice Helix, but it's going to be leading from what Mortzi just said. Is this starting to look a lot like Tommy Two Step is this year, this season's up to snuff, where his main character is shining, but he's only playing at secondaries? Or is there more to it than that? I think he's playing real, really solid. I, I, just, I think he's playing solid Street Fighter. And Idom, Idom, Idom learned. From, from season one. He knew, he knew coming in that he was going to have to have a secondary. He was going to have to because he knows what happens when he can't pick his main like the entirety except for, what, two weeks of mm -hmm. last season? So he knew. I can almost 100% guarantee you that he went into the lab and said, I'm going to, to bring a secondary up as high as I can so that that doesn't happen to me again. And it's showing. You know, he's – granted, it's not going to be as good as his Laura, obviously – but, you know, he's going to get decent results just because his, his mindset on the game and the way he plays, he's good at the game, you know, outside of Laura. So I think his poison is going to do just fine. How That's actually a really good point. Yeah, I was going to say, how important is it for, uh, for Team Spirit to actually land some wins with Idom playing poison as opposed to Laura? Honestly, I don't think, I don't think it matters either way because – of how the set, uh, how the format is this season, you're going to have someone who's really good on their main no matter what. So yes, Iom's Laura is fantastic, but everybody else gets to play their their main too. So you're going to see. It's not as important, but it's going to be a factor that that even if you don't have to play the best, you're going to have to play somebody who's almost as good. On that note, it's actually really important that the person who isn't banned picks up the slack and we haven't been seeing that from cj truth i'm not going to talk any more about it because it might come up when we talk about cj's match but uh yeah that's the kind of thing that dynamic with the bands being 
a different band the second time around is really important and it really puts a lot of the onus on the other it's not just team spirit it's everyone every team um and we'll also talk about it yeah we'll talk about it with the cj strider match because that is literally the not just position but it's the um the two extremes of doing it with your main and doing it with the secondary. epitome yeah, that, uh, that, that might work. Enemy extremes. Um, yeah, yeah that's fine. Right. Yeah, e- either end of the spectrum mm-hmm. right. there. Um, let's talk about the second match real quick because uh, we we delved longer into the first match than I thought we were going to do. Uh, <laughs> Mojo and Mika versus uh, Art and Dalsim. Uh, looking to ride the wave off of Tommy's win, Mojo stepped up in a game that was far more lopsided than one would have predicted on paper. Arturo's Dalsim had no answers for Mojo's pressure-based attack, simply found himself on the back foot for essentially the whole set, losing 2-0 to the young upstarts Mika. Is this a blip in the radar for a great player like Arturo, or a glaring hole that can be exploited against Team Spirit? Splice Helix. I think, I don't, I don't think it's going to be uh, an exploitable, like, oh my gosh, we need to go after Art, because... It's art. And Mojo, I was impressed with Mojo. It's different. It's 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 pretty much the opposite of Chakotay's Mika. His Mika is just so active all over the place. And uh, <laughs> you don't expect to see that many jumps on, on a pro level, but he was making them work. You know, he got in when he needed to get in, and he just kept Dawson locked down, and that's how you had to play against Dawson. I know this is a guy player, and it sucks. <laughs> Monty, thoughts on thoughts on art. Um, it, it he hasn't looked bad this season, but this is the first time where we've seen him just straight up on the back foot. Should Team Spirit be concerned about uh, the Dalsam main on their team right now? I don't think it's. I mean, Dalsam in general is kind of a less so. I think it might be less so in this game. His matchups polarized really, really hard. I think maybe in previous games they were fairly polarizing, but in this game they're. But not so bad, but I feel like Mika kind of throws that out the window where you, you're you going to be on the back foot for a majority of the game. He gets in, you do not have any easy out. Your teleport's not going to... It's not helping there. So it's, it, it is really rough. Um, he just wasn't able to find, you know, keep her out. When he did, he won, obviously, because that's, that's how Dalsam works. Um, even though much... And that's the thing, actually. Much less in this game, because Dalsam can be the uh, the offensive character um but i think it's it says less about arturo and more about mojo i think just that both players both of strider's picks have been just playing a lot better personally than i thought they were going to um whether or not obviously they're very very strong players and i it's my interpretation was much i had much lower expectations but they're freaking killing it dude so i think um yeah it says more about mojo how strong a player he is, right? And less about how Arturo. Plus, I guess you got to look at how the matchup might kind of take into it too, right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, were you did did the end result actually shock you about how lopsided it is, or is this one of those on paper struggles for Dawson? Uh, it didn't really shock me that much. I don't think NLBC has a Mika either. That that is actually true. That is as far as I call. I can't think of one, and I'm sorry if the Mika of NLBC is the one Mika. He's be talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so and it might be because Arturo doesn't. Does he travel for tournaments? Right, not lately. Not so lately. A majority of his experience, and if he plays online, obviously he plays online quite a bit. Uh, but so that might be that sort of gap. Whereas Mojo is obviously, obviously the person playing the character will have much more experience playing against the character versus, you know what I mean? So. No, that is 100% fair. Uh, let's jump into the final matchup then. Uh, another returning new character as a secondary this week comes from 801 Strider with G targeted for the bed. It came down to Gustavo's matchup experience and character knowledge, taking on CJ Truth's seemingly game Karen, who we've seen who we've also seen, rather, in previous weeks. Once again, Lucia's moveset proved too much to handle as Gustavo continues to succeed with a new character. Two wins in the SFL thus far. How impressive is 801 Strider's Lucia, and is she strong enough to carry him through the expected G-bands throughout the course of the season, Mortzi? I think Strider's the one carrying Lucia. I think... 
one, it's just ridiculously impressive. Everyone's like, all right, it's Strider. He's going to bring out the lore as the secondary. He brings out this Lucia that we've really seen him really play, right? And that's been obviously incredibly, like, this is what you need from a secondary from someone who's going to be a targeted band. Because um, what really matters, obviously it matters when you guys, that you guys win every single match, but it's, you have to look at the dynamic of the two it's the head to head for both matches and whether you win when you have your best players character banned versus when you have their best the best characters unbanned so in, for instance the weeks that uh, akuma is banned for team frost as an example obviously dual kevin great player um, but the weeks that akuma is banned if they can pull out a win there it's like that's fantastic but it's when they're playing when akuma isn't banned that's when they really like they should win it's not just like a you know and especially if they and it all depends on how the bands work out if you ban their best player and they don't and they ban like if they ban again team frost if they ban rashid and he gets to or uh samurai gets to play against a team without the best player best player playing their main, then that is a week you have no excuse to lose. So that's the kind of head-to-head -head that we have to look at. And this is one of the ones where, like, you can't, you should not have lost this week. Team Spirit, I don't think, has any excuse for losing this week. CJ picking Karen, I don't know what's up. I don't know why he's not playing Cammy. Um, is the big one, right? I Maybe something with the DPs that Lucia, because Lucia's are air invisible. Um, the normal one, so she's actually decent, like decent anti airs, especially that crowd troops is also really good. Uh, but there's no excuse for them to lose this week when they ban G and um, who is banned again? Uh, and Laura's banned, like that's Laura might be the best ban. Mind, I actually think that people, I don't see, I don't know whether or not people are gonna bother banning CJ to be honest. Maybe if they have uh, a rough Cammy matchup, but I don't think you bother with the Karen. Yeah, no, I I actually agree. Uh, it, it's one of those things where, um, over the course of at least prior to when they filmed this, CJ has not been playing Cammy, so you have zero reason to fear this character, right? Yeah, just there's no he's, he's regular he's regulated to a solid backup as opposed to the primary threat. So what's going to be interesting next time? Obviously. I think Laura might be the best band that they could do. So, and next time it'll be, um, they're going to have to, or Team Spirit's going to have to ban either a, a subpar person on the other team, someone that isn't Strider G, and they're going to get to ban who, they're going to have to deal with Laura, but they're going to have G. Right? Yeah, that's going to be so a it's, really interesting rematch for sure. Yeah, exactly. It just changes the whole dynamic, and you have to be careful of that head-to-head. -head. And that's going to be a common thing. I'm going to keep talking about it because it's really important. Obviously, this is the first half of the season, and it lines up how the rest of the season might go because we can base our the second half on the assumption that of what the bands will be, and that's going to give us a good idea of how it, the second season will play out. Yeah, Most that's, likely. That's definitely something that we're going to keep an eye on, and we'll definitely go into that when we get into the second half of the season. Spicy, let's give me some thoughts on uh, 801 Strider's Lucia and how good that performance was. He's been he's been laughing her since she came out. He, You know, I, I run into him every now and again in Ranked, and it's it you can see the progress every time you fight him. He, he's getting nothing but better, and I think it's a, I think it's a solid secondary for him. Uh, she's different. From from G enough to where, you know, what do you do? How do you how do you counterpick that? And then it's it's enough it's at a high enough level to where he's not worried. You know, okay, bam my G, I'll play Lucia. But do you have matchup uh, experience against Lucia? No, you don't. So you gotta you gotta deal with a a really good player playing an unfamiliar character, and that's never fun. Mm. Yeah, also, no. Strider's neutral is disgusting. Oh As my goodness. Good walk speed, strong uh, throw game, and the medium punch, that's plus three. And then you have a very, very strong, bufferable, crouching medium kick. It's, it's it's a Strider character, too. Like, it's just it just works out so well. You saw the throw loops that he did as well. Just He's so good, dude. 
and putting on a character that suits him like that is wicked. Yeah, Morty, you and I were having... Was it you and I? I, I think it might mean and Quincy also. We were having a discussion about how good this character or how much potential this character actually has now that we're seeing her more and more and more. Um, mm. Arguably in that Zeku range of character, maybe. I don't know if she's that high. I think she's probably mid-mid or... I don't see her going low mid. Mid-mid or higher. I put her right in the middle. Right in the middle? All right. Well, hopefully we'll get to see more of this 801 Strider, Lucia, and uh, we'll get to figure it out and uh, sort of make predictions on that one. Uh, just the last last thing on this matchup. How shocked were you with the result? Just either of you. This is, this, is my, this is my comment on the Team Spirit curse, bro. <laughs> they're... they're... They're uh, uh, underperforming pretty much every time, which is frustrating. Kind of like another team. Yeah, I was going to say, it was kind of like the other team spirit, right? With uh, with Justin Wong's team spirit. Well, no, nah, I was making a reference to Inferno, but we'll get oh, there. Oh, we're getting there soon. We're, we're getting, getting there. there. No, no, we'll get there. We'll get we'll there get eventually. There. Yeah, anyways. Um, but yeah, no, it's like the other team spirit. You had Brian F. What was Brian F. J. Wong and uh, who was the other? Psycho. Yeah. And that was a team you're like, it's Brian F. And it's freaking J Wong. They're yeah. going to crush it. And then they got mocked by like everyone. almost everyone. Yeah. Like, Except for Team Psycho. Poor Team yeah. Psycho. Oh, we'll get into that yeah, coming up team. right now. <laughs> uh, so that was the end of our first matchup from week four. And that was uh, Spirit and Storm coming up next. Uh, week four, match two, saw Team Psycho versus Team Gale. The second match pitted the top of the table against the bottom. Yikes. Another statement win for Team Gale, or, you know, going from Season 1 to now, let's say we're on 12 straight losses, trying to avoid 13, or, yeah, something like that. Something about Psycho, there's there's something wrong with that purple jacket, I don't quite know what it is, but here are your highlights from that match, Team Psycho <laughs> versus Team Gale. Poor Team Psycho. <laughs> for electricity that's gonna leave him at advantage but rob tv he had meter himself let it rip the thing about this blanca pick right here is this guy will still gets access to all of his tools no matter what if you cross him up he still has flash kick so if you commit to it and you do it wrong that means you're in trouble he also still gets boom so if you're full screen and you miss a rainbow ball he definitely can challenge with that but this round looking a little different likely in favor this time of dank it is ever so Only slightly bear. right yeah because of that gray life now accumulating but he does have full critical art so he's gonna have to spend these resources oh that was a big roundhouse taking a ton of damage and that you was can't the setup. do that. that was the setup that he was just talking about he's like i'm gonna use standing medium punch to keep in range for the crouching fears tried to do it and rob tv instantly had an answer oh fuck uh, okay you might want to go take the throw Dank it is needs this round. He needs this round or it's not gonna work out. I like the bait right there. He's trying to get him to flash kick so he can get some big damage to throw. Anything else is gonna do it. No CA available. Oh wow, that definitely would have off him. Definitely would have off him. I like that. Going for the weakest option possible. That way you're not gonna get big damage. He still has trigger. Oh he still got the throw, Dank it is. Definitely taking that risk with saying short. Set point here. Oh, that's good. That is so good for automatic. That is not good, but this time at least he gets a full punch. <laughs> that was good, but it wasn't good after that. <laughs> Check it with the forward short. Okay. I'm liking the work that my boy Sagat is doing right now. And he got caught flinching. Three for flinching, actually. Oh. Oh, the toenail to the eyeball. <laughs> These hits, they hurt so much. <laughs> oh, no. That's, That's not a cross cut DP. That's gonna hurt. To the corner. Not a good position to be in versus a Buki. Not with that hitbox, bro. Oh. Nice block from Automatic. This is a tit. The throw. The defense from Automatic right now is immaculate. I spoke too soon, Steve. Ah. Oh. After the wheel kick, Smug try to commit to a butt, but Knuckle Do, he knows the gaps. Did you see the memo on the screen for G? It just says Earth. Like yeah, Earth. I saw it. I saw it. 
I didn't even know that. It was my first time seeing it. Oh, oh he tried it again. Mm. Smug with the jump short cancel. And even still, the power up. This is really good. It's going to power up those fireballs, too. Yeah, level two on the presidentiality. Couldn't even say presidentiality. Oh. Oh. Dash up twice. Nice tech from Smug. Mm. I like off. the fact that he went for the jab just to be sure. Block on the low. And he only does it when he knows he has trigger to activate. This is a bad situation to be in. Command grab will kill. But that oh, and he too. thought. He thought it was going to be a command grab. He heard him. Yeah. And that's going to be it. Psych. All right. First match of this set saw a couple of firsts for season two. Rob TV forced onto Guile with a band of Karen from Team Psycho and Deck Diaz breaking out the Blanca with a band of Dalsim. Though it seemed that Rob TV has gone with Karen as his main for the foreseeable future, it did not appear that he has lost his touch with his former main. Interestingly enough, Deck Diaz went with the Blanca, a matchup that on paper appears to be in Guile's favor. Of course, later on, we learned that G wasn't available at all for Deck Diaz as Team Captain Smug opted to play G in this match. But would G for Danka Diaz have fared better than Blanca against Rob TV's Guile, Splice Helix? Can I just say, can I just say, somebody play Guile. I, I love it. I love it. It only took a few weeks this time. Yeah, you know, it didn't take the whole entire season. Um, I don't think, I don't think G would have been any better. Uh, depending on how you play it, he's, he, I think it's about even uh, for G now. That I know what I'm doing, um, but as 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 amped as I was about Gal being picked, then the rest of the team had to go and pick Ibuki and G. I mm, just, just just no just, no. You can leave, you can have G now. Season one was ban G. Season two ban Ibuki. I hate Ibuki. I hate it. Sorry. But but no, I think I think that. Uh, I think having G or Blanca, either way, against Guile, if Guile is played correctly, which Rob TV can do, obviously, either way, I think I think it would have gone in Rob's favor. Morty, do you think Dan Kadia should have went with the G instead? Uh, no, I don't. I don't know how the matchup is between Balrog and G. Um, but I think they leave the G for Smug. Is the big thing, right? And this is the issue with... It's like an issue and not, um, but you ban away the sim and you force uh, Dank on either God. His roster is like they've got to be the weirdest roster of characters that he has, right? So he's got you ban away sim, and then G is overlapped, so you generally lead it for smug, uh, and then he's got Yurian and Blanca. <laughs> That's his back two characters. It's like, bro, why, why these bloody characters? Um, but you, no, I think the G, yeah, you leave it for Smug. I think a lot of this week, like, even though they got 3-0'd, they were 2-2-1, right? And it wasn't even, like, they weren't landslide victories for either of them. Um, this will actually be good for next time they play, um, because it means that they can ban, uh, well, they're never banning G, obviously. That is never going to happen. Um, but they ban um, Shine. They'll ban Ibuki next time. So that means they can play. And uh, they ban Sim. So then I don't even know if Team uh, Kale will ban G. That's actually something that's really interesting, right? Because if they ban G, both teams are like, I can't. I don't really want to ban G. <laughs> Frankly, though, I think Smug's the better. I mean, Dude's got good secondaries, right? Both teams are like, you ban G and both teams are still okay. Which is really, it's a testament to the depth. Uh, it's nice. Um, yeah, I think the Blanca was a fun idea. It's either, it's basically an even matchup uh, between Guile, and you probably expect the Guile, and I think he does fine against the Kali as well. I'm not super sure. Don't quote me on that. Um, so it's, there were, there were good choices. There was a, Blanca's a fine choice. You said he went for the throw bait and it just didn't walk far enough away. Like, what are you going to do, man? Uh, maybe take throw next time. <laughs> so he gets yeah, the maybe, pushback. Maybe. But, right. yeah. Um, so, 
yeah. stealth girlfriend. Yeah, stealth. <laughs> she was more stealth than uh, than Geki's though. Yeah. So. That was that was that was, that was clutch and I thanks. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, so I think honestly, I I the Blanca pick was fine. Just you had to depend. This this entire match was you're banking on your skill as players to come out victorious, mm-hmm. and they they were just short. It wasn't even like it wasn't that bad. All right. Um, I'm I'm gonna spitball and say uh, I'm surprised that he didn't go with the Urian instead, but it might have been just like one of those. Let Let's give us a different look because we know how Gal Urian can be absolutely atrocious for Urian. So may, maybe he wanted to give a different look. I me personally on paper I don't like the Gal Blanca matchup. I think Gal stuff kills that matchup, but uh, he can sort of keep Blanca out the same way perhaps. Uh, but we'll we'll never really know. It it came down to. Obviously, there's more experience on playing Guile on the side of Rob TV versus uh, Dan Diaz. Though he does have a multitude of characters, Dan Diaz playing um, Blanca was definitely not on the same level. At least that's what it seemed like from this matchup. You think that Rob TV has more experience fighting Blanca than Dank has fighting Guile no, no, as no, Blanca? No, no, no. I said... Uh, Dank has less experience playing as Blanca versus on TV characters. playing as God. Oh, as playing as, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, can, I can tell you, I can tell you that <laughs> Dank could be as against G, or against Guile is, uh, it, it's not the best. Yeah, based on all of his characters, I don't think it's it's that great. Even even the Sim, because you're kind of playing in the range where you just want to stay out anyways. I don't I don't know if, if he had Well, Sim, Sim, Sim Guile is really good, but okay. but his, his G versus Guile is... Now you like it because you figured some stuff Personal out. Personal experience. Personal yeah. experience showing here from the Guile main here at Beyond the Fist. The second match, uh, we were talking about character versatility and strange picks on the side of Dank Diaz. Uh, speaking of character versatility, of course, his teammate, Automatic. Second match of Psycho versus Gale saw Automatic and his Sagat take on Shine and his Ibuki. Talking point from the draft regarding Automatic, of course, was his versatility. But in three weeks of play, now this is the fourth. He has continued, or sorry, this is the third, rather. He has continued to stick with Sagat as his character choice. Knowing that his main character would be free to play for half the season, we're finally seeing Shine's Ibuki as well, and we're seeing it, well, shine. Despite a strong defensive performance for most of the game, Ibuki proved too much. I know it was a dad joke, sorry. <laughs> Despite a strong defensive performance for most of the game, Ibuki proved too much and broke down Sagat's defenses to win the set. Given the arsenal that is currently available and at the disposal of the online warrior automatic, are you surprised that he isn't trying to counterpick matchups thus far? Or is it just a matter of time for his Sagat, Mortsy? Do you really counter Ibuki with any character? You know what I mean? Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no matchup where I'm like, yeah, that feels good against the Buki. <laughs> Dana Buki. Yeah. So I think Sagat, if he's like none, nothing in my roster, good against the Buki, and then Sagat is the like default. That is the character that he's best with. That is the character. He's not necessarily. I can think of at this point, he's like known for at least that's the character when he plays Street Fighter. He's streaming, right? Obviously, he played Honda. He played. Zeku, he played everyone. Um, but <laughs> that Sagat is like the character that he kind of been really working with. All the I think we see a lot of stuff that he does here that we don't see other Sagats do. And it might be like a normal thing, but we don't see Sagat. So we get to see cool stuff. I don't like the necessarily the way that he spent his V trigger. I think he was expecting Shine to jump back or try to jump out, so he was doing it more of a as a frame trap to try and catch the jump, but it just never happened. Uh, so I'm happy with the, the Sagat pick was fine. Uh, it was even close, right? Like it wasn't even a yep. bad, like that bad. Uh, yeah. So Sagat was probably just the best chance that he felt. And it wasn't, uh, there were, I'm, there's, I could see through more matchups. If he's, he looks, cause he might either do like, I want to win this match or he wants to do, I want to win the whole set. So in this case, he might be like, I want to win this, but also give myself the best chance uh, for the rest of the game. Um, and Sagat is, fills, I think, both of those roles fine, and that's just because that's what he's most likely most comfortable with. Uh, yeah, and then Shine's doing Ibuki things. Much less Ibuki things. It was very, like, 
normal Ibuki. Like, not, you know, no. uh, what's his name? It wasn't Unga uh, Ibuki, if you want to Yeah, he was that. just doing normal Ibuki Street Fighter thing. Yeah. Not like Unga, yeah. Yurian, Ibuki thing. All right. Spice Tealers, give, give me your thoughts on the Sagat, and do you think uh, Automatic should start thinking about reaching into his bag of tricks? I don't I don't think he did bad. I mean, it it it's like Morty said, hey, who do you counter Ibuki with? Ban Ibuki, just banner. Uh, but, I mean, he's... His Sagat's good. It, like Morty said, it was close. I don't, I don't, I don't think any of his other characters would have done any better. I don't think he is holding back for any reason. I don't think he's he's keeping certain characters hidden away for any reason. I think it's just going to be situational. So mm -hmm. if he needs a character from his bag or B character for whatever matchup, I think he'll just pull him out when he needs him. Pikachu, I choose you. <laughs> Uh, if, if you're an automatic fan, and obviously he has a lot of them because they voted him in, um, and everybody has been touting his versatility, are you disappointed thus far that he hasn't picked anyone else? No, because he's going to have to. Yes, I think you're just, you want to see more variety, right? And this, this, uh, this, the whole roster of everyone that's there for this roster of Street Fighter League, there's, you were, we have quite a few care people who are like bringing out the variety we would never have seen a Blanca last season, you know, like. We, we've got Poison, we've got Lucia, we've got Sagat, we've got uh, Blanca. We have seen so many characters that we had, like, the roster of characters that was played last season was actually pretty small. There was yeah, a lot of the biggest surprise last uh, season was Nash. Yeah, Nash was probably, like, the coolest one we saw. We've already seen Nash. And it, yeah. yeah, he's <laughs> but, very, he's very uh, bad. We've seen Guile. We didn't even see Guile. That's how far down we didn't go in the tier list. Was we didn't see Guile until like the end of the season. Yep, it's wild. So um, I think you're happy if you're an overall fan in terms of the variety. But if you're an automatic fan, obviously you want to see he's going to be a source. Uh, ideally, people are like this is going to be a source for a majority of that variety that we want to see. That's why we saw the Honda in the uh, the the week one kind of pick the draft, uh, and that obviously people are going to be like, I want to see Zeku. I want to see Honda. The other characters, right? Um, and we haven't gotten that. So people are, can be disappointed, but I don't think... Obviously, they want to win, right? Yeah. So you have to right. gauge your expectations with how much variety we're going to see, unless it gives him the best chance. All right. All right. <clears throat> um, I had a topic prepared for uh, this last one, but we kind of addressed it in the first one. So I'm going to end it on sort of this kind of note. Are you shocked at Team Psycho's record right now and the fact that they've carried over between Season 1 and Season 2 to this point, to, to Week 4, 13 straight losses? It's the Cleveland Browns of the Street Fighter League. I mean, <laughs> it's... I, I, as much as you talk about Team Spirit and, you know, the expectations for a Justin Wong team, I think Psycho... I think Psycho embodies the curse a whole lot more. Because they've got the talent. They've got the yeah. talent, you know. It's I don't know if it's just bad luck, you know, i.e. the curse, or if it's just bad matchups, bad timing, or you know, bad bands. I I couldn't tell you, but oh yeah, I see how long the streak goes. The band was questionable this time, but I see just like they don't care. They're gonna ban Ibuki, and they're never gonna ban G. So the next thing to ban would be the Karen, right? And they can just they're gonna. They're gonna save the shot or the Ibuki for next time. Like they don't really care, right? Because you, it's it doesn't really matter. You're gonna play two matches against them regardless. One time you're gonna ban this character. One time you're gonna ban the other. They're not gonna ban G. I think this is a, actually a good tell for we're never banning. No, that's fair. But then I'll, I'll let's close this matchup on or on sort of this question then on the hmm. rematch. Should G actually find itself on the ban table? Hmm. Who is who is worse off, Team Psycho or Team Gale? Psycho. Uh, I mean, who, who relies on G? necessarily that worse? Who relies on G on Team Gale though? Sorry. Who relies on G on Team Gale? No one does, and I don't think Smug relies on G either. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not relies on him, but I think he's. I think he's as good, if not better, as far as the matchups go and and the players go with Balrog. You've, but it might be, I think, 
we'll say that Team Psycho is worse off because it's a map. Balrog has much more polarized matchups as opposed to G. So not polarized per se, but he has a lot, lot more worse matchups. So if they get G banned and then uh, actually in this matchup, what's going to happen? All right, uh, Knuckle Dude, they're going to or Gale's going to ban G. Uh, Knuckle Dude's going to pick Cammy. Smug's going to be forced on the Balrog. That's yeah, okay. That's, okay. That's okay. good strategy. That's pretty good strategy. Unless they ban Cammy. This is going to be some like massive big brain shit the next time these two teams play. Because they're not even going to ban. They won't bother. They'll try to get, if they can get Dude to ban first so they can confirm it. And then they confirm the G ban and then they ban Cammy. That, that would be That'd some be cool. big brain stuff. Yeah. How does, how does Mika do? Because you know he's not going to play Guile against Boxer. Far, far, wor- far worse than Cammy does against Boxer. Yeah. Right? Because Cammy Boxer is really, really bad. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like, it's going to be, uh, yeah, it just like, it's going to be some big brain, like this is actual strategy that might have to come into play that we have due to this overlap between these two teams. Uh, also, Psycho is technically much worse off because it's not just, it's also Dank having a G that pull That's out. True. But at the same time, he's never going to pull it out if it's not banned because Smug's going to play it. So it basically isn't a part of his pool. You really think about so, it. So then, the last thing on this that was the ban of Dalsum this week or this th- on week four by Team Gale was that the big brain play? I don't think they were thinking too hard about it. I think just Sim is fucky. <laughs> she just want to deal with it. So get it out of the way for now. And um, I actually think in this case, strategy wise, Psycho came out on top super hard because they the they're gonna have to deal with Sim next week or next time, right? Yeah. Not next week, but they're going to have to deal with Sim next time, yep. and they're not going to have whatever character does best. To- All right. We, we, will, we will close out that topic there. Big ups to both of you, because that entire last bit was completely improvised and not written out on my mm. treatment sheet. Um, so, big ups to the both of you. Uh, great work on that one. Let's take a look at... improvising anyways. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> the final match of week four uh, saw the surprisingly winless defending champions, Team Inferno. Their spliced helix disappointed face. <laughs> team Inferno against the undefeated and battle tested Team Shut Frost. Up, more team. We discussed last episode the importance of momentum, and Frost had all the momentum going in with the two OCV reverse sweeps, courtesy of Samurai. Would they be able to continue that ride, or would we see something else entirely? Here are your highlights from Team Inferno versus Team Frost. He went for the season one! He went for the season one! I can't believe it. Rip threw his hands up in the air. He's like, I do that too! I do that too! What a screw up. Look at him, he's over there. Yeah, he's so happy about that. I can't believe it. Another round that could have been closed out for Bonex. This is exactly what I mean. Man, that was, I feel like that's just that's the, what... the riskiest thing you could have done. But hey, man, if it works, it works, right? Can't complain about it. Ooh. Mm, that low forward. And now you see Samurai opening up that movement a little more. Mm, nice the conversion. conversion. Nice conversion. Uh. Mm, almost swung right back into it. Got a couple of hits from it, too. There's the activation. Oh, no. no. No fireballs. No fireballs. Oh, yes, fireballs. It. More fireballs. Excuse me. Oh, got caught with the tail end of that crowd strong. And this is what I mean. These rounds look like they're so in control for Brawly Legs, but he's making a few of these gambles. They're not paying out. He ate a few EX fireballs. Still has trigger. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, dropped it. Didn't have the meter to even do EX legs, and Samurai took full advantage of that afterwards. pretty immaculate you know really calling out sherry genix he's like you know what i'm gonna dissect this character or i have dissected yeah. this character before i'm gonna show you why i'm so familiar with it and this isn't the first time these guys have played before either they actually played each other on like e-league too so excuse me the challenger excuse me oh okay uh, uh. Gets do it again. dash up goals for the standing strong full conversion there 
Okay, he gets the interrupt. And oh, but no combo it. following and through. Oh, same oh. side, great block from Cherry Genix. I definitely thought I got hit. I was on the other side. Still has a chance here. Full CA available. That's the end of trigger. Mr. Rashid. Oh. Oh. Couple straight hits. Cherry Genix getting a lot of counter hits here. And he confirmed again. Gotta watch that gray light. Full CA available. He can go for the chip out. He's getting Ooh. dangerously close. Stop walking into those. You're gonna get in trouble. Don't put your hand in the fan. Mm, the interrupt. Oh, and the V skill raw? It would have been into critical art either way. Point. Is it gonna happen, Steve? Is it gonna happen? Duel Kevin. So again, if he manages to eliminate Punk, he still has to go up against JV. But this is perfect. If he could eliminate Punk, he would just have to fight JB in the mirror match. And you still got Samurai, although depowered on the back end. I keep forgetting about exactly. Samurai because he used Ryu. <laughs> That's the only reason, Steve. Okay. My mistake. Yo, R Rashid, dual Kevin. Oh. Okay. I like that. And the small delay and the meaty. Oh. Look, just backing up, just all crouching to get out of the range of those crouching medium oh, kicks. Oh. Forward throw. Gets caught by the EX. HP spinning oh mixer. Anything God, can is he going do it. To do it. He At the same time, he really needed to make that comeback happen because now JP has another round to play. Final, final round. Oh, no. Go back and up right there. What a check. Now, now you see Samurai actually backing up to this range where he's like, let me catch my breath a little bit. Let me let me make sure. Look at JP just making sure he's not gonna be in this situation where he's stuck taking damage from you, especially in the middle of the screen where he Ooh. can just move around. JB's trying to use his movement to keep the corner what? in his favor. Finally, four for five, finally blocks one of those reversal EXDPs coming from you. I thought he was gonna do it again. I felt it in my bones. Uh oh, JB picking up steam. The speed, he's on the gas pedal right now to keep that offense going. Just full charge on the tornado. V reverse, we gets the knockdown. Samurai still alive, even though the deficit is in his favor. No anti-air, he gets the jump in. Look at the damage from Ryu. I was holding the button down. I said anti-air, it didn't happen. JB on full offense now, trying to get a bait against Samurai. Any touch, can't do it for him. Oh my god. my god, he's fucked. It's not over yet. Double dash, okay, one more touch for either player, and that's it, JB eliminates the Samurai. Oh, exhibition is dual Kevin. This isn't the only game he does hella combos in. Oh, yeah, that's definitely true. Okay, spinning mixer, spins that last bar on his side. Gets it right back, though. Caught him with the stand strong, full conversion there for JB. Final, final round here from these guys. Takes the full wall out this time around. Back to the middle of the stage, I did almost, almost. Ooh. That could have been a big deal if that eagle spike had landed. Dual Kevin wasn't ready for... Mm -hmm. Oh no, Waiting all the way it. down. Oh, that could have been dangerous. Pressure, trying to get that throw pressure. That was it, that was a throw. That was a throw, JP. that was a throw. Oh, oh. Oh, activate. activation. Oh, nice anti air. Oh, you're dead. Not quite. Oh, oh the yo. call out. The call. <laughs> All right. In week two, we saw Duel Kevin break out the face of the franchise with no results to speak of. With the Akuma targeted by Inferno this week, as well as one of his secondaries in Karen, which we saw in Season 1 of SFL, Samurai went back to tried and tested Ryu. The end result saw him beat Broly Legs first, but fell victim to JB's Airman Rashid in a very strong showing. How did you guys feel about Samurai going back to Ryu? And did he show glimpses of being a threat without having Akuma on the table, Mortzi? So, there's a few people currently in the SFL uh, but in general, where you watch them play and you're like, you don't even need the name screen. You can look at them and you're like, these are these people. This is this person right now. One of those is Smug. 
he plays a completely different G compared to everyone else. Uh, and the other one is um, Samurai. And it's not character speed. It is a... What's the word for it? It is a mantra. It is a... It is his way of being when he's playing a character. It's his way of thinking and the way that he plays the game despite it being a fast-paced and such a volatile game at times. He is the one to take the clock and slow it down. He uses all 99 seconds that he possibly can. Um, and so you give him a Shoto, someone who can chuck fireballs, and he is going to strong, strong uses. The issue being... Uh, in this last matchup, wasn't his character in the JB match. It was his lack of matchup. Which, uh, how many, holy shit, how many whirlwind shots got uninterrupted? How, for also, you know when he throws the ground tornado and it goes across the screen while in future, you can throw it. If he throws it from too far away and he rolls, you throw through the tornado. That is a thing, and he didn't do it twice. And that would have been monumental because he wastes a bar of he wastes the thing of each other and uh, yeah. But yes, the Ryu is great. The Ryu is awesome. It's really fun watching him play. He's not afraid to pull the trigger on that DP. Um, he doesn't have EX air fireballs, so he can't just get away or like a massive amount of screen space for free. But it's still really fun to watch him play because he plays in such a different manner to many other players. Uh, so Ryu's great. I just Samurai in general is a really he's like a treat. He's a bit of a treat to watch. Thoughts on the Ryu there, spliced helix. Well, I think you know he he came in with Ryu when the game when the game came out. You know before before the Akuma even existed, before he was three zero OCVing teams on SFL. You know he played Ryu. That's that's his that's his homeboy. It's like my Nash, you know, but my Nash sucks, and his Ryu's good. It's 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 good, you know. It's it's not his Akuma, it, you know. It's not going to be his Akuma just because of the characters and their tool sets. But I think I think it did fine for for what it was there for. And I I don't think he was going to beat JB on his main with Ryu. Just I mean, he was like two hits away. He was I know, so but, close. But inch or a mile, you know. Yeah, almost only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, I think I think he did perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. I just think uh, I think JB was in his comfort zone. And can I just say, fighting Rashid is hard enough. That stupid costume. It, yeah, I was gonna say it, that is, too. is it not so super dumb? It's it, it, super it, weird to hear Rashid's voice masks, coming out of Airman. Yeah, it masks some of some of not his animations, but like some of the the. The well, way the you see thing, the moves come out. You want to see the entirety of the movement. Yes. Right? And you yes. Basically, it takes out all of his torso. It doesn't ex- There's no in- There's no like. You're not. There's no tells per se. Yeah, obviously, no visual there's... indicators. Yeah. 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 Like, and since when does Airman throw his tornadoes out of his foot? Yeah. Last time I checked, it was through his chest. But anyways, um, oh, we no, all know how little, I feel about he's very. Got arm yeah. Well, I mean. But also, if I may say that this is what you want out of a secondary. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of performance that you want to have out of that. Yeah, right? absolutely. Player gets um, this is this loss, I think, is a bit on dual Kevin mm-hmm. because he didn't he he got the win against Punk, and that's that's what he needs to do. But he, I mean, he, it was his job. This is actually basically both of them, both JB and Rashid. It was just or JB and the, JB and dual Kevin. It was up to them. It was obviously that's what it came down to. But that was going to be the story of the match, anyway. Um, Dual Kevin taking down Punk was also obviously very important. So I actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that Dual Kevin didn't pull his weight because he he got a win, mm-hmm. right? That's all you can really ask for. He just wasn't able to pull it out. Yeah. So I mean, we talked about uh, costumes and and characters a little more in depth. Myself and Moitsu, of course. Um, when it comes to a certain uh, Brazilian beast and that fuzzy stupid costume. Anyway, oh, I hate that costume too. <laughs> That, that Blanca Chan should be banned uh, from everything except like cosplay. I thought you were talking about Claudio. <laughs> no, we we we, we had uh, that's a different conversation, but that's the that's why are you that, calling him fuzzy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! That makes um, sense. Uh, we it's it's documented how much I hate Blanca Chan. Anyways, moving on. Uh, the 
the game plan to take Punk out of the equation, Mortsy alluded to it earlier, Team Frost did so with, and, and it fell through in the player order when it came down to Duel Kevin's Rashid taking on Punk's Colleen because of the Karen Ben. The match didn't appear close. Duel Kevin shows why Rashid is not just powerful in the SFL, but on the Capcom Pro Tour as well. Did this matchup count down, come down to Rashid being that good, or are we starting to see cracks in Punk when he is not playing Karen? Spliced Helix. Yes. That's my answer for both parts of that question. Um, I think I think Punk stopped playing Colleen as much as he used to, and I think it kind of showed in that match. Um, you know, he's still Punk. He's still good on pretty much anything he touches, but if he had had Karen, it probably would have been a different story. And, you know, it's... If the punk problem is going to return, it's not going to be on Colleen. It's going to be on Karen. So he's got that for at least half of the season. And I don't think it was a bad pick uh, by any means um, as far as his other characters go. But I think it just, it might have been a crack. It might have been a uh, lack of, of playtime, you know, uh, to right before SFL2 started. And, but I, don't know. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be just fine. Morty, talk to me about Punk. Is he starting to show signs of sort of not being able to play these characters anymore? Or is it a little more focused on Karen because we're halfway through the CPT season? Or is this just Rashid still being, you know, the, one of the better characters, the top five character in the game? Um, I don't know, because Punk kind of... <sighs> Maybe he just hasn't spent as much time on the secondary that he wants. Like, because I imagine he's played a lot of Sia since he came out. Right, that was kind of where his focus was, and not necessarily on Colleen. Um, so maybe the character's just rusty. The other thing that I noticed was that he kept trying to. I'm wondering whether he was reacting to EX Whirlwind Shot and not just default holding up forward, which is why he kept getting uh, hit by the um, the EX Whirlwind Shot. He kept trying like holding up or back dashing something, and he kept getting. Well, he was no, he was holding up. Um, but I guess he might have been reacting, so he was doing it far too late where he would still get caught by the whirlwind shot. And that resulted in a hell of a lot of damage and him staying in the corner. Um, I think he's... I think Rashid's really good, dude. She's just such a good character. And it just at no point was Punk ever able to get out of the corner. And that's... You need space to make V-Trigger 2 work. As Colleen, you can't just activate in the corner and then die to Rashid pressure. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Rashid's just a really good character. Obviously, credit to Duel Kevin. Like, it's not like it's free. Oh, I pick Rashid, I win, you know? That's that's not a thing. Duel Kevin's still a very, very, very strong player. Um, but yeah, Rashid's just some shit, dude. All right, well, we'll leave that topic at that. Uh, this last question is going to change a little bit because we talked about sort of how strong Rashid is already. So let's talk about the last match real, real quick. Uh, turns out Samurai isn't the only player capable of an OCV. Rashid on the table for Team Frost Duel Kevin also meant Rashid was on the table for JB, and we saw the end result was a 2 nothing shellacking for JB over Duel Kevin. We talk about uh, the struggles of Inferno so far. Feels like this could be a turning point. That was the original question, but I will pose this one instead. With the ban of Karen off of Punk and the win that Duel Kevin got over Punk, was this a missed opportunity for the table leaders in Team Frost? Mortzi. I'm, tr I'm having a trouble understanding the question. All right, so they got the band that they wanted. The game plan that they wanted was to beat Punk, so they banned yeah. Karen. They yeah. didn't. And they win. beat Punk. Yeah, but they didn't win the whole match. Was yeah. this a missed opportunity for Team Frost? Oh, 100. percent This is this is another one. Of, this is exactly what I've been talking about the whole time, right? Is when uh, not necessarily because Frost in this example did have a Kuma ban, so both players, both teams this time actually had their weaker, um, their main or their. I mean, captain, they're not captain, but they had their main players on weaker characters this time. Um, so this is the kind of, this is where it's like even. So 
So in the next one too, it'll be Akuma versus Perrin, and that'll be the match or like the dynamic. So this, the dynamic that we have for the next match will be is chosen by the teams or the dynamic will have. So because they each banned secondary or the strongest player in the first one, the next one will be, um, it'll be even as well. So this is the kind of when you do. If you do your strategy where you ban their weaker person first and they ban your stronger person, then you end up, you're basically going for the 1-1. One, one. That is, I want to win at least one. But if you go, if you end up with this, where both people are banning the strong, you're going for the 2-0. Does that make sense? Nope, that's that's 100% that's fair. The, that's the opportunity you're giving yourself. If you manage to pull out a win when your stronger character is banned, it just, you're so, in such a good position because it means that you might have the 2-0 despite um eventually having your other care like the strongest player banned out uh, and those are the teams that the more that they manage to overcome that dynamic the sh better the higher they're going to be in the standing obviously but that is just we're going to see that trend of that dynamic trend throughout the season and in the standings as well the, at the end we'll see when we look back at the bands and how each match played out, we will see which teams over did the over performing based on when their characters were banned. All right, Splice Helix, talk to me about your boys team Inferno. They got the W. They are finally on the board in season two. Uh, will this trend upward? This was a big win for them, obviously. Without without Punk and uh, Karen available, Punk actually took the L in this one, and it came down to JB. We see a lot of this, of course. Um, in season one, uh, is this is this the uptick that they needed? Uh, well, I mean, first off, it took them long enough. It, you know, it's. I think momentum is always a factor in anything having to do with fighting games. So, yeah, it's. It might not be the thing to get them on. You know, we're going to win every single week from here on out. But it's you know, it's definitely a a breather. You know, we're we're not we're not going to be at the bottom forever. It's 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 a good it's a good time to turn around whether or not whether or not they do doesn't necessarily spell out the rest of the season, but it's a good it's a good start. So, you know, having one, even if they drop next week and then pick up the week after and 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 then win the whole thing, then, you know, it's it's a good it's a good momentum booster or morale booster. But you know, we'll, we'll see because everybody else has the same exact chance to do the same thing. All right. When we get to the midway point season, I'll talk to you guys sort of about records and, and where they stand and how important it is because these guys are playing for the top four as we now know the full format of, of the entire thing. Um, hopefully, we'll see something from Team Inferno. On paper, they are still very, very good. They are the defending champs for a reason. And uh, we'll see what happens. Any last words, guys? More C Splice Helix on anything? Uh, I think that is a fantastic idea to have like a mid-season recap just to try and uh, and then we can yeah, sure. use it to look forward. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. And I'm going to pretend that you didn't say anything. Uh, I said catch up. Catch up because, you know, we're doing double episodes now. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we do a mid-season kind of thing where we can talk about how we think the rest of the season will play out. Also, give me plenty of heads up because I will do a bloody – excel sheet to figure yeah. out how what we're going to end up seeing yeah. and then we can do our predictions to see how all the matches are going to go because i'm that'll be really fun i i really think there are a lot of statistics that we could delve into at the midway point we're for probably sure. going to plan out some kind of show for that one after we're after all we caught up because as you guys know it is currently week six so we have week yeah, five and week. six to catch up on, which we will do before the week seven episode airs. So more on that a little bit later on. That's our show for today. I want to thank Mortsy and Splice Helix. As always, video footage from Street Fighter League Pro US is used with permission from Capcom. Follow the Capcom Pro Tour and Street Fighter League on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Capcom Fighters, on YouTube at youtube.com slash Capcom Fighters TV, and on Facebook Live at facebook.com slash Capcom Fighters. BTF's review of weeks five and six from this past week will be airing Wednesday, October 9th, and we will be all caught up and re re resuming uh, one episode per week on the Wednesday beginning Wednesday, October 16th, and we will also we have hope. a show we hope, and <laughs> for the uh, and we will also <laughs> now add the uh, the review show for the Midway Point, which will be after this one, so we will do that show as well, probably 
on a Friday or something before like what we're doing right now. Uh, so for the panel, Morty Spliced Helix, Tagashi Azrael, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on Wednesday for the next mega episode. Weeks five and six, the Beyond the Fist review of Street Fighter League Pro US Season 2. Have a good night, everybody. We'll see you next time.